everybody. Welcome to Linux Cast. I'm your host, Matthew Weber. I'm joined by Martin Burke. How are you doing, Martin? Doing well, thank you, Matt. How's things on your side of the world? Well, I'll tell you this. There's about a foot and a half of snow outside my door. <laughs> I got so much <laughs> snow. I don't need any more. I'm, I'm, I'm done with winter. I'm just saying that right now. I'm just done with it. I don't want to see any more snow until, like, December-ish, somewhere around Christmas. Uh, and then I'm just done with it. I'm seriously, it's so cold here. It's I'm, I'm just done. <laughs> is it? Do you guys get? I don't even know. Do, does Britain get snow? I mean, like a lot of snow. I know, like I know, like Scotland gets snow, but I... yeah, I think we've had about snow about five or six times. Uh, usually, to be fair, the rain washes it away, but we don't get anything major. It depends where you live in Britain, but. Yeah, I think around here we've got about, I'd say about three inches, if that. <laughs> mm, okay, well, at least you get a little bit of winter, so you don't have a foot and a half outside. All right, so no. what have you been doing on on Linux this week, Martin? Right, um, I've upgraded my monitor to 4K, but unfortunately I was having audio problems through the HDMI, so I decided just to try a new um, Linux distro, um, so I tried out Garuda Linux. Uh, I tried out the KDE Dragonized version. So it's a rolling distribution based on. <coughs> <Arch>. <laughs> um, I'm quite impressed actually. Um, really good looking distro. Obviously uh, helped with KDE, but yeah, it's quite nice. I've got to give it a bit more trial. I've heard uh, Jill Butte booting it with Mint anyway, so um, dive back up back into it and the weekend we've got a bit more time but yeah it looks all right um sadly it didn't sort solve my solve uh, sound issues so i'm guessing it's a bios problem because i've moved my main rig in here now so i'll have to go through and see exactly what who the culprit is how about yourself what you've been up to oh i've kind of had a really busy week in terms of linux so i i mean some of this was last week but uh I've been messing around a little bit back in i3, so I've been looking at different status bars. And I made a video on Bumblebee status, and that's been kind of fun to play around with. It's just a, you know, like a status bar. Um, it's neat. Uh, it's kind of noob user friendly, I would say. Uh, it's not really anything. I mean, you can get into the code and stuff and tweak it a bit, but it's really meant for people who are, you know, just want a bar that just has a bunch of themes with it and you don't have to do anything to it so I've been messing around with that and um, yesterday I did a video on I feel like I'm always pimping the YouTube channel but I did the um, uh, racing KDE to look like Mac OS Big Sur and once you install KDE on a distrib- on a on a distro that didn't have it before KDE kind of takes over everything so it, like changes your GTK theme and your other window managers and stuff and it's kind of a mess so i've been thinking about hopping again and i really had a good experience with mx linux so i'm thinking about giving mx linux a try now whether or not i would stay there because you know there you are would be just gone and that would make me astonishingly sad um probably completely miserable miserable but um i don't know i'm thinking about it we'll we'll see if that happens i saw your uh, mx linux um, pop up and I thought, oh, look, right, let's see see where he's got a slate in Linux, uh, MX Linux in. Uh, but yeah, you, you're impressed. I yeah, mean, that, I really liked it. That um, was the first one that I had started on before. Mm. Uh, but yeah, it, it's, it's a nice little distro. I, I don't mind apt. I, I I I don't care for Ubuntu because they kind of shove snaps in your face. But I don't know. Uh, we'll see if that happens in the next week or so. I mean, I, my setup works really well right now, other than random KDE stuff popping up. That I don't mm. know if I really want to switch away from it, but uh, my my ADD will probably get the better of me, and you know, I'll eventually help. Um, the last thing I want to talk about is that because, as you know, my audio setup is very complicated. I got the the um I got the Scarlet Solo to do the mic and the input and stuff. And it took me weeks to get that fixed, you know, as you know. But I decided to make my setup a little bit more complicated, and I got a DAC. So um, that has been an, a little bit of an ex- 
uh, experience, but mostly it's been fairly good. It was just mostly plug and play. It's just a matter of making sure that each uh, application knows that the input comes from the Scarlet Solo and the the output goes to the DAC. It's been a little a little crazy, but not too bad. Um, I don't know. Sounds good though. I mean, it sounds fantastic. All right, so contact info. If you want to get in contact with us, you can do so uh, at twi at the Linux Cast on Twitter. I'm at MTWB. Martin is Martin Twit to you. You can find all these links and stuff in the show notes, whether that be on the podcast or on the video. You can also subscribe at the LinuxCast.org, which you, transfers you over to our anchor page, where you'll find all the links to Spotify and iTunes and all that stuff. You can also subscribe to us on YouTube at youtubecom linuxcast. And you can also support us on Patreon at patreon.com slash linuxcast. And I would like to take this opportunity to thank our very first Patreon, Dave, Dev, Devon, or maybe Davon C. I, I, I'm not going to try to pronounce his last name. It's it's not something I can be able to do. And finally, you can also follow us on Facebook at facebook.com slash linuxcast. All right, so each and every week, we, Martin and I each select one news item that we would talk just briefly about. So, Martin, your news item for this week. Right, so I've kept my news item from last week because I didn't re uh, record. Um, so Linux 5.11, it was out yesterday. Uh, but my news was um, Linus has been up to his old uh, tricks, uh, branding the Super Bowl as a juiced-up version of the kids' egg and spoon race, while expressing his inability inability to wrap his head around the rules despite being in the U US for over two decades. I mean, this is disastrous, branding it egg and spoon. I mean, it's obviously incorrect, as everyone knows, that it's a mass advertising circus with a bit of futuristic rugby added. <laughs> in all seriousness, though, there's a fair few improvements on 5.0. Point eleven. I haven't had the chance to go through them all, but there's um, like some. I think there's um, some guitar hero things. You can start to run Linux on the Ouija console that came out a while ago. That was a crowd-funded um, project. Um, I know there's a couple of tweaks, I believe, um, to give you five percent um, running various different processes so um, it, it could look good so hopefully I'll, I'll, I'll be able to drop a bit more information even though once everything comes a bit more clear and I've had time to swat up on it but yeah all good 5.11 uh, out yesterday Suppos supposedly there's um, some very interesting gaming stuff that's in the kernel this time to get to yeah because a lot of the games now come with that DRM anti-cheat stuff um, Supposedly, there's some stuff in the kernel now that will allow uh, developers or whatever, specifically Wine developers, to work towards, you know, getting by that kind of stuff so that you can actually play more and more games on Linux. That that should be pretty fun. Oh, brilliant. And the last updated um, did various different... Um, able to use different um, console game pads and everything. Mm -hmm. uh, so it looks like they seem to be concentrated... A little bit more on that, but yeah, why not? Um, I'm sure there's plenty of people out there, myself included, that literally has it's got a Windows machine that is just primarily a, a Roblox machine. <laughs> so I mean, that's all that mine's really used for. But yeah, yeah, I'll dig a bit deeper into that. So, well, there's going to be loads and loads, um, but yeah, I'll have a dig into that. Uh, how about yourself? What news you got? All right, so Martin Wimpress, or affectionately known as Wimpy, has, has uh, been leading the Ubuntu desktop team for, like, I think about two years now, maybe three. Um, and he announced this last week that he's actually leaving Ubuntu, so that's a little bit of a set of sad news. Um, it, it, the reason why I kind of put this on there is just because it seems that Canonical is going through a little bit of a problem retaining the desktop guys. I don't know if there's anything nefarious or... You know, going on here. Maybe he's just found a better opportunity somewhere else. Uh, but it just seems like there's a little bit of instability in terms of the desktop lead, and that is a little worrying because, um, as we all know, Canonical makes most of their money and stuff by providing Ubuntu to servers and companies and stuff. Yeah. Um, 
so the de the, des the desktop's kind of always fallen a little bit by the wayside, and we're a little worrying that maybe the leadership there won't continue to focus so much on the desktop as they have been in the past. Um, I mean, it's one of those chicken and egg, isn't it? I mean, if you if you're happy and comfortable as a Linux user at work. You might just think, oh, I'll, I'll give it a, a spin at home, save uh, spending any money or save transferring o OSs. I mean, there's nothing worse sometimes if you're on a, a different o OS that you're using constantly and you are a, are a, a P PC user at home. Um, I mean, to be fair, I'm, I'm starting to forget a number of my um, shortcuts for the Windows desktop. But, yeah, I mean, I mean... Yeah, I saw that bit of news as well that he was leaving. I've heard a couple of podcasts and things with him on. Uh, good guy, yeah. Shame yeah. about that, but onwards and upwards, that's the way to look at it. Yeah. All right, so let's jump into our main topic. Now, originally, I was going to have a go at Linux Mint, and um, just for fun. But I decided to kind of broaden it out a little bit because one of the things that we talk you know, a little bit about in, in the Linux community is that Fragmentation is a is a real issue. So there's a whole bunch of developers. I mean, the the open source community is actually really large. I mean, for the most part. I mean, not everyone's working on distros. They're working on you know servers and uh, you know um, you know applications and stuff. Uh, but it seems that for a lot of the time, we've actually spent a lot of time just creating more and more derivatives of things that have existed before. So we're for always forking stuff because whether whether it's because we just want complete control as developers or you know we don't d agree on what direction the the app is taking so we just take it for our own whatever. And and we see this a lot with you know Linux distributions specifically. I mean, we we have Debian which is like the the daddy of Linux um and you know, it, it spawned Ubuntu, and it has several other you know derivatives, you know, Devon, and you know several others. Ubuntu itself has its own derivatives, you know, Mate, and you know tons of not Mate, but Mint, and a whole bunch of others. Arch is the same way. We you know, have Arch, and we have Manjaro, and Endeavor, and you know, uh, Arch Labs, and t tons and tons. Uh, Fedora is the same way. Open OpenSUSE, I believe, has a few forks of it. Uh, so I mean, we just have all of these derivatives, and and I don't want to be the Linux guy who says, you know, choice is bad, you know, because I, I love being able to have all these choices to choose where I'm going to hop next. I, but on, alternatively, I feel a lot of the time it's just developers putting their resources and time into uh, things that necessarily maybe shouldn't exist or, or aren't necessarily exist for good reasons, so... I guess, what are your thoughts on Linux derivatives, Martin? Just trying to think, to be truthful. I mean, yeah, more choice is, is better for everyone. I mean, we've all um, installed a, a distribution or something that, like that and just thought, why is somebody... I mean, obviously, they've probably put the heart and soul into it, uh, but there's, a, there's a, a number of distros out there that just seem pointless there, there isn't like a, a twist or something special i mean you've got your your various different categories if, if you want um mac os type you, you, you can go to that um if you want to do it the hard way you can do arch if you want it nice and easy you want um linux mint i mean more choice is obviously best for everyone but yeah, I mean, the, the water does get a bit muddy, and, and I suppose for anyone new coming in, it, it's just, you, you could get swallowed up by the amount mm -hmm. of choice, essentially. Whether there should just literally be a, some sort of Linux adventure type game, where you click start here, are used to Windows, are used to Mac, and just click through, and then it'll say, well, here's a top five that, that we, we could quite happily recommend to you that would fit in ideally i mean then again there is good things because you might well have a, a, a random distro that's way down a distro watch that has got some kooky little things in it 
that maybe other bigger ones do um, borrow from. So it, it's a hard one. I mean, at the end of the day, there's hundreds and hundreds to choose from. I mean, you, you've only got to look at how the, the amount of different flavours, types that's in the top 50. I mean, yeah, more choice is better, but I, I do think that sometimes it, it does appear that we, we seem to be drowned in these new distros. Yeah. I mean, there's but no way it, to there's no way to stop it, right? I mean, the developers no. are gonna just gonna do what they're gonna do. Um, it just feels kind of, I mean, it just feels like sometimes, like, for example, I mean, I, I know I pick on Linux Mint, so I used Linux Mint after making that Linux Mint is useless video. And I actually really enjoyed Cinnamon. So Cinnamon has a reason, good reason to exist. It's like the a modern version of Mate or Gnome 2 or something. You know, it has a lot of modern quirks. It's very, you know, easy on the eyes. It's very easy to use. Um, so Cinnamon itself has a reason to exist. It's just that, you know, it, the, the, you know, the things beyond that. So, like, they, they basically just took Ubuntu and then they've, ripped out the snaps capability of it and put in Flatpak and then made it cinnamon and that's basically what the focus of Linux Mint has become and and maybe that's a good enough reason for Linux Mint to exist it just feels like they're also always in this kind of tug of war with canonical over you know whether or not you know certain things should be the way they are you know and stuff and in Linux Mint's you know Specifically, it just feels always felt to me like they should focus on the Debian edition. Um, but I mean, there there are other examples. So like, Manjaro has a lot of quirkiness to it because it's it, it is an Arch-based distro, but it's not a traditional Arch-based distro in that it isn't truly rolling. I mean, it's rolling in that it's a delayed rolling release. It's like yeah. you know, like a month behind or something. And, and usually their updates are all released all at the same time. So like, I have updates come in like every Friday whereas Arch just comes in like every minute you know so I mean they all have the, I mean, a lot of these have quirks but I, I think actually the best um, example of a distribution that I just find completely unreasonably there for whatever reason is Solus I just did a, a review on Solus and I don't understand the purpose of Solus existing it, it doesn't have good support for it for its own repos. So, I mean, like, if you want to install third-party stuff, it's kind of hacky. Uh, I mean, the only really way to get good software on Solus is to use Snap, in which case, why are you using it? Because, I mean, you just, then you just use Ubuntu, and you don't have to deal with any of the slow updates and stuff like that that you have to put up with. And it just doesn't seem like there's a good reason for it to exist. I mean, other than that the developers want it to. You know, it doesn't serve a purpose in the Linux community. And I, I, I know a lot of people will use Solus and, you know, it, it has a lot of, um, like, grassroots support from people who really like the people who started it. And that's fine, I suppose. It just feels like maybe there needs to be a point. It, it, I guess my point is that if you're going to develop a Linux distribution, that there should be a, a, a substantive difference that you can put forth to what you're basing it on. So, like, if you're basing your distribution on Ubuntu, you know, be like Mint and just focus on Flatpak. That's a good. That's a good difference that I didn't really see when I first before I used it. You know, because Flatpaks are different. I mean, it's a different choice and it allows you allows someone to use an Ubuntu-based, you know, distribution without having to have snaps shoved in their face. You know. Um, or, or, or if you're, I guess you're using Manjaro, you're, you want to use Arch, but you don't want the, the bugs that always come along with it, or, you know, whatever. Um, it's just that it ha I feel like it ha there has to be something that you're doing at least a little bit different. Otherwise, you're just wasting your development time on something that, you know, whatever. That's just my thoughts. Think, yeah, I think like you say, it's scattered. I mean, obviously you got one man bands uh, put together a, a distro and basically just um, pretty it up with various wallpapers and bits lo like that. Um, I mean, like that uh, Garuda Linux um, that I'd installed, um, obviously it was a GUI 
um, install of Arch, which was pleasant. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, and then it gave me the option to, um, I forget off the top of the, my head, but gave you the normal welcome st- screen. Um, and then I could add additional or programs to it. And it was a really enjoyable experience. I mean, if I didn't know anything, obviously it wouldn't be so enjoyable, but it was nice to actually have a welcome screen. Don't go into a store, right? I'll download Audacity, download Skype, um, I'll do VLC. It it roughly guided, right, what graphical, (coughs) what games I could do, the Steam, Lutris, play on Linux, all things like that, different repositories off the back of that. I mean, I've, by the time I'd finished, I mean, it was downloading about four gig, but but that was really quite quite nice just to save scooting about. Um, and, I mean, bringing it back to Linux Mint, I mean, I believe, I mean, it's up there for a reason. I mean, I really don't know why it isn't number one, because straight out of the box, you've got so many... Uh, so m- so many packages available to you. I mean, as soon as you log in, you've got Redshift for backing up your system images. You've got um, Warpinator for transferring to another PC, running Warpinator. Uh, you've got the web apps, containerized programs. Uh, won't talk about hypnotics. Um, straight off the gate you've got a usb writer so if you don't like it you can download an iso straight away and just burn yourself another one the amount of bags of rubbish i've downloaded and have to download a decent usb writer to get rid of the thing is amazing but i I do i mean it's horses for courses isn't it everyone's got the favorite oh well you should use this or you should use that but i mean it it just it, it all brings down to comfort i mean you're obviously comfortable at arch uh, installing it you carry on doing it the hard way from my point of view <laughs> but um what i want is just to have a package it downloads i mean i won't call it bloat because they've got to install it with maybe a couple of readers vlc um JPEG viewer, bits and pieces. It's just whatever you feel happy with. I mean, I've had, I've tried out, um, oh God, was it Ubuntu Studio? And that was brilliant. Everything you could ever want for audio and video <coughs> was built into it. So you, if, if you're on that side of the spectrum, audio, video enthusiast or whatnot, I mean, there you go. You've got a, a, a distro. Just install it. And you don't, you won't be wanting to download anything else because you've got everything in one distro. I mean, if you want just something um, for your old eight, nine-year-old laptop, you, you could do, um, well, MX Linux and um, Mint's fine on it, but you, you could go to Puppy OS or things like that. It just depends on what you're comfortable with, but it's just finding that comfort blanket of knowing what you're looking for i mean it, if your auntie wanted to sick and tired of whatever operating system she's on you obviously wouldn't chuck a solus um free bsd or anything like that you, you would either give a ubuntu or, or mint yeah I, i'd like to think i mean everyone seems quite happy with ubuntu but it, it it just depends at what what people's comfort is. I mean, if people want to start with bare bones Debian, they just do the plain Debian, vanilla Debian and build on to it. I mean, that's got a it's a bit of a nightmare to install, but um, you get your selection of your desktops and everything um, as you're installing it. But yeah, I, I think it just is. I'm rambling there. It's just literally your comfort zone, but it's actually knowing what you are comfortable in, whether it's endless uh, customization with KDE or quite happy with Budgie. <laughs> it, it all yeah. depends. I mean, you wouldn't want to uh, give a, a, a newbie KDE straight off the 
bat, but they'll probably progress to something like that. They'll find their own um, distro that does suit them. But the, 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 I think we're just drowned in choice at the moment for anyone yeah. um, I mean, that's really what, what That's really what they... I guess what we need is... I mean, we're, we're never going to stop the problem of having uh, distros that are, you know, very niche, I guess. What we need is a good way of showing users, especially new users, what distros they, they should use. I mean, if you Google uh, best uh, distros for new users, you're always going to get the same answers. You're going to get Mint, you're going to get Ubuntu, you, you know, those are probably the, the the main ones. I mean, every once in a while, you'll, maybe you'll get Manjaro or whatever. Um, but, I mean, at the end of the, I mean, and, and those are good, like, uh, those are good articles to allow those blogs or whatever to get views and stuff but you get along to the question of who made them the expert right so i mean you really don't know i mean how do you know that they know what they're talking about so plus you have to i mean if if you're coming from windows to linux you have to be willing to do the research on what you know the transition is going to mean for you i mean and it can't just be you know Oh, I went to OMG Ubuntu, so uh, Ubuntu is the best choice. Um, so I mean, the, the the challenge is finding, I guess, new new Linux users that um, are interested in going that extra little bit to do the research and say, you know, this is the amount of work that I'm willing to do. This is, how, you know, th these are the applications that I need. Um, so I mean, it's just. You know, it, it, it's just, it's one of those things that you think about because, you know, it's, uh, there's just so many distros out there and, like, prior to using MX Linux, I, the only place I'd ever seen it was at the top of distro was, and, and like, I was like, why is it always at the top? And, you know, <laughs> I used it, and it's really good. Yeah. And it, it does add, it adds a lot. It's one of those examples of things that they've taken Debian and they've made it better. And I think if I, I think if we always saw, you know, the derivatives of stuff of the main distros do that, they always take the the the, the, the mothership and then somehow improve it, somehow make it useful for our surf. Like Ubuntu Studio is a good example because they've taken, you know, I. I and maybe Canonical has done it, but somebody's taken Ubuntu and said, you know, we're going to take this and make it extremely focused on being really good for video and audio production. That is a good use of a derivative. It's, it's when you get to a derivative that's, you know, uh, we're just going to, we just don't like Ubuntu, so we're going to run our own, you know, distro, you know, just so that we can have control over it. That's when I get to the, you know, having a bit of a problem with things, but it's just one of those things, right? So, um, I don't know. It's one of those big topics that you, that's going to come up, you know, time and time again. How do you fix fragmentation in Linux? And I think that if you ask an Ubuntu guy, their solution to fragmentation on Linux is going to be snaps, right? So the biggest fragmentation on Linux is always package management. And because, I mean, uh, Ubuntu has apt and, you know, uh, Arch has the Pac-Man and the AUR and, and you know, OpenSUSE has Zipper and Fedora has DNF and it's just over all on and on and on and on. And it's, I mean, that's the biggest hurdle users have moving from one district to another is because the applications are all probably all available, but you have to learn how to install them. So... Canonical's answer to that is going to be Snaps, Fedora, and Red Hat's their answer is going to be FlatHub and Flatpaks. You know, it's just one of those solutions, and there's not really that. Maybe one of those are the solution for the fragmentation on the uh, the package management side, but there's not really a solution for fragmentation on you know the distribution side because there's just always going to be that abundance of choice. I think we beat that horse to death is what we did. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that there's anything more to say about that one. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and just move past the big topic and move into our apps of the week. So, Martin, your app of the week. Right, it's an app called Haruna. 
So it's a Qt client for MPV, link below to the GitHub page. It also may be in your software sense, it was on mine on Mint, uh, but it can be found in the AUR or installed as a flat pack. <laughs> so it's basically a usual um, MPV player. Um, you can copy and paste YouTube addresses. Um, so it supports YouTube DL, which allows playing online video from over a thousand sites. I just I couldn't believe how many sites it. You, I've never actually used YouTube DL, but the amount of sites that you can copy and paste into, uh, I'm guessing YouTube DL, obviously, but Haruna, whether it's a BBC, um, and obviously copy your YouTube addresses in and watch your YouTube uh, videos with no um, ad breaks. That's my pick. Oh, that looks cool. All right, so... Uh, I'm going to be bringing you, surprise, surprise, a terminal-based application called Pulse Mixer. Um, so, huh, my continued quest to make my setup, uh, my audio setup as complicated as possible, uh, I found an application called Pulse Mixer. Basically, what this is, is a terminal version of PAVU control. And basically, I've just bound this to a key binding, and it allows me to just to change volume. I mean, it, you can change source and stuff in it too, but it's not a, you know, whatever. Um, basically, I just wanted to way because for whatever reason, when I plugged in my DAC, I had it, it automatically sets the volume at 100%. And the only and it doesn't respond to my media keys on my keyboard for whatever reason. Like it will change the volume up and down, but it always stays at 100%. So. I wanted an application where I could just quickly get into a via key binding and just use the mouse or use a key, use uh, the Vim keys in order to change volumes up and down, so that I don't have to actually go through and uh, have my ears blown out by 100% volume. Um, the, the DAC itself does have a volume control on the front of it, but sometimes I'm just much too lazy to reach the I don't know mm, five inches away that it would take. To uh, get to the volume control, so uh, it's much easier just to do, uh, right? It's just uh, um, key binding away, and it's so much easier. So that's my pick. It's uh, on GitHub. I will find a link before I put the show show notes up. So that's it. Um, okay, so I think that that's it, right, Martin? Anything else to say today? No, I was all ready for a, a Linux Mint off, to be truthful, but you let me down. I I I I didn't want to pick on Linux Mint. I was like, because after using it, it was good. Um, I like Cinnamon a lot. I think that Cinnamon and Linux Mint go hand in hand. So that the, my original argument that Linux Mint doesn't need to exist is is not valid because Cinnamon is good. Like, there's a good reason for Cinnamon to exist. That's the reason why I think that you know. Linux Mint is actually better than what I originally thought it was. I still wish that they would focus on the De the Debian edition, just because I want less support for Canonical. You know, I want fewer Ubuntu distribution de derivatives and more Debian, you know, based yeah. derivatives. Just just because it's not, you know, Canonical's a huge corporation, and I'd much rather have a community-based thing. I also think that Linux Mint eventually would be happier to, you know have a little bit more control over what they get not only from downstream but what they have to send back upstream uh, and it just makes more sense because I mean Debian focuses mostly on flat, flat packs as well so it just more it makes it, it makes more sense to me than always being this constant fight with uh, um, canonical over snaps and trying to figure out who's supposed to f to package chromium and all this nonsense <laughs> so I, I am sorry that we didn't get into the fight that you were looking for. Oh, dear. <laughs> yeah, so, so sorry. Anyways, so make sure you subscribe, youtube.com slash linuxcast, link, the linuxcast.org. And uh, our next topic, I'm actually, what is our next topic? Our, our next topic is um, file backup. We're going to talk about backing up your files where you should do it, um, how you should do it, all that kind of stuff. That's Martin's topic, so that'll be uh, next next week. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, stay safe. I'll see you next time. Excellent. Yeah. See you later. See you later, guys.